the students that are a good fit for our campus are students that aren't necessarily served well in the regular classroom because of some of their differentiation needs. They may have asynchronous development, which means they're more advanced in one subject or maybe academics above social and emotional. So when we're looking at our gifted students, people often look at their intellect and say, oh, they're really smart and they have high emotional abilities, but that's not always the case. We are ready to read. Do you know anything about the Erie Canal? The way that you'll know that they're struggling is they will demonstrate intensities. They'll act out in an appropriate way, like just getting mad, crying. And there's really no way for the class to move on because you've got this you know, student that's in, in crisis, in need right now. You also have the quieter students, those that were um, kind of internalizing those behaviors. And so similar issues, but it was anxiety, it was shut down, it was apprehension and frustration that weren't necessarily visible. And those students really needed us as well. We have a tendency to assume that these behaviors are choice behaviors, that they're attention seeking. We attach a lot of labels to that behavior that's really more um, associated with blame than support. I was that teacher that would, you know, so I wouldn't necessarily keep my cool. I didn't understand where they were coming from. I didn't give the kids the benefit of the doubt. One of the first things that Holdsworth made us do is slow down and reflect and bring everyone to the table, including our students. And I think that was a key turning point for us. Watercolor is a lot neater than your acrylic paints and your temper paints. So, so part of the Holdsworth process is to identify you know, where your needs are at and what's leading to those needs. As we started to check in with all of our stakeholders, we realized that students really were aware of the problem themselves. You know, it wasn't about bringing their attention to the behaviors, it was more about bringing their attention to possible solutions. And so for our kids, we wanted to teach them those self-regulation skills. And so that's really what evolved into our My Time. So we're gonna breathe in. My time is in the middle of the crazy, busy morning. It's the same time every day, and kind of everything in our space just kind of comes to a halt. We all gather together in a central meeting spot, and then a teacher or a student will come to the front and lead everyone through breathing exercises, a yoga piece, some stretches, meditation. So that when they did become upset, um, they would have the skill to take a deep breath and maybe remove themselves from the situation. Within the first year of us implementing some of these solutions and strategies, we immediately noticed an improvement in the behaviors. We had parents calling in saying that they had seen a marked improvement in their children at home as far as utilizing some of the, uh, some of the breathing techniques. We've had moments where um, the breathing exercises have been revealed at home. Well, I use them to mostly calm down myself because I sometimes get a little too excited at the wrong time. She pointed out how she does the breathing with the fingers. Basically you just, when you go up, then you breathe in, and when you go down, you breathe out. All the way until you get to the end, and then you can always do the other hand. And I was like, I like that. I want to do that. And so after she did it and demonstrated it, we're like, okay, let's do it again. The moment where I was like, this is working, was walking through a math classroom where all of a sudden I, I started hearing, and there was a student in the middle of their math class doing their square breathing that we had went over in my time before. And I think I like stopped on a dime and almost lost it in that moment. because I was like, this is working and it's working in a way that is accessible for the students to be able to utilize without any adult support. I feel as though I'm a lot more open-minded, so I have to be the best me that I can be for my kids. It's helped me a lot with, again, just being more patient and giving kids the benefit of the doubt. My hope for students at School for the Highly Gifted is that they can be balanced and whole individuals, that they're valued for more than just their academic strengths, that they're also valued for their citizenship, for their social-emotional health, for their empathy and care for others, that they can take those gifts that, um, that they have been granted and utilize those to transform the world.